So one of the ways that we try to celebrate and recognize racial diversity is through our active participation in the MLK Day celebration here in the city of Anderson and then here on campus, offering a number of opportunities for students to learn and to experience some things that perhaps they were not uh, used to growing up, perhaps. And one of the things that we do is have a march. A peace and justice march. And um, to be able to kind of express um, to AU, to the city of Anderson, really to the nation, um, that Anderson University um, believes that God has created all of us um, equal and that we should treat one another with love and respect. Uh, we then march back from the Paramount to campus and then have a series of activities on campus. It's a newer event for me, so I mean, it's not new by any means, but when it became a national holiday, then we started intentionally canceling classes for celebrations and so on. Our students have a day where they can observe, participate in some very meaningful activities and talk about the life and work of Dr. King. In one of my early years as a faculty member, uh, Dr. King's widow, Coretta Scott King, was commencement speaker. So those are some of the things we do, try to highlight uh, and recognize the diversity and how important the diversity is here on campus. James Earl Massey. James Earl Massey uh, was our campus pastor and is just one of the more legendary you know, pastors the Church of God has ever had. A brilliant biblical scholar, preacher, teacher, and an amazing classical pianist. Supposedly, he could practice piano on the bus without a piano because of the way his brain worked. He was gifted in terms of how he can, could convey God's Word in a way that impacted people where they were and I think that he was so wise and so elegant in the way that he spoke that it was always a privilege to sit and listen to him. When you're listening to that guy preach, you don't want to be anywhere else. I mean, he like wove webs of words that, that you get caught up in. But he was one of our outstanding faculty members. He ended, I remember, just remember, he ended a sentence with the word of, and he stopped himself and in a magisterial tone. He said, and pardon my use of the hanging preposition. I thought, this man is so next level that he's communicating the gospel and critiquing his own grammar at the same time. No one's asking him to be better, so he's asking himself to be better. I think about the impact of people like James Earl Massey and his name, so widely recognized and respected throughout the world. There was a big article that came out by Christianity Today that they like named the top 20 preachers in the U.S. or whatever, and James Earl Massey was one of them, and he had it. And my teachers at these other places had heard of him and knew of him and had assigned his books, and so he was a very big deal. Um, nationwide in terms of what he had done. He's written so many great books. I use one of his books. It's one of the best books I use, actually, um, when I teach spiritual formation here at, at the university. So uh, his influence is, is outsized. It's still um, shaping the way we do things. Uh, his drive for excellence. Um, uh, he was just a different kind of person and left his mark. S.P. Dunn. S.P. Dunn, Seth Dunn, who our Dunn Hall is named after. First dorm named after an African-American man at a predominantly white university or a non-historically black college in, a, in America, according to Jet Magazine. And the reason it's named after him is because he was part of the Board of Trustees and it cast the deciding vote back in, I believe, the late 20s, or early 30s to change the name of Anderson Bible college and seminary. To Anderson College to go to a Christian liberal arts institution. He was also uh, just part of the, the movement of connecting, if you will, the white church and the minority church, both black and uh, other minorities. He had to drive through in the 20s uh, the, really the capital of the Ku Klux Klan activity in the north here in Indiana to get from Chicago um, to his uh, meetings here at Anderson University. S.P. Dunn, who had a radio ministry, had a, this large influence, and 
they awarded him an honorary doctorate. You got to think, 1954, this is prior to uh, the bulk of the events that, that then uh, occurred in the civil rights movement. It's so easy to forget. It'd be easy to name S.P. Dunn Hall after Sutter P. Dunn in 1980 or even 1975 or 1970. But this is, this is way before uh, many of the, m the major events of the civil rights movement. This is on the cutting edge, I think. Jumping Johnny Wilson. Johnny Wilson uh, was a uh, great uh, high school basketball player here in Anderson, but he couldn't get into Indiana University because they were segregated. We weren't segregated, and so he came and played at Anderson. He was so impactful for our female student athletes because he'd come into practice and interact with them and encourage them. And, you know, he was a part of the Globetrotters for a while as well. So he'd show them tricks. He'd drop a kick, a ball at half court and he'd go into the, and he'd kick it with his foot and go into the basket. There's an amazing story of somebody who he went to school with and they are down in Alabama after a Harlem Globetrotters game. And this, this white man finds Johnny and they, they in front of everybody, give each other a, a hug. And, and down in Alabama, and we're talking like the, the 50s. He was really impactful in that he was always, he always opened his arms to individuals. And so just this, you know, th there is a history of, I'd say, diversity and, and reconciliation and, and realizing that there is a unity fundamental to everyone and that we are all made in the image of God. Yes, Heritage Week is a great time here on campus where all of our culture clubs that we have here on campus will share a particular part of their culture to the AU community at large. The marketplace actually has had a week in which they serve uh, dishes from, from Latin American cuisine, Mexican, Puerto Rican, Cuban. We have a number of events that um, are geared towards uh, bringing these kids and, and making them feel like this, this would be a place where they can be at home. We just need to have the entire month of, of September serve churros. Amy Lopez. Amy Lopez was, uh, was a woman of color from Jamaica who was on the faculty here in the, uh, over several periods, but from the 1920s through into the 1940s. I can truthfully say I never felt devalued by any professor I had at AC. I never did. God does call women to understand this rich tradition of women being included as leaders. Um, and it's been wonderful to have a supportive community that um, has a history of, of recognizing women have a place in ministry, that representation matters. International students. I also appreciate the international students and what they bring to our campus. On my floor, we had guys from 30 different states and four different countries. Uh, and black and white and Asian, uh, Hispanic, uh, a number of African countries, uh, some Caribbean countries that were represented there. A lot of students here from, from Africa, from the Church of God work in, in Kenya mostly, but other countries in Africa, a large Lebanese contingent from the Church of God in Lebanon, a lot from the Caribbean, from the islands. And, and uh, uh, so I had a lot of students that, that was my first uh, chance to meet people from those countries and get to know them. My hope is that we will continue to do the work that's hard and to make this a place where people come in and feel that we reflect the world we reflect many cultures and that we are accepting and people feel comfortable when they set foot on our campus. As a community, we are, we're working to diversify more. I think I've seen the good and the bad when it comes to diversity on campus. Like so many institutions, like so many things in U.S. history, it's a pretty checkered past in ways that if you talk to everybody who's been here, they probably have some good and some bad experiences around uh, racial diversity here on this campus. I think as with probably all institutions, the university has had its challenges and its strengths. 
in how it handles diversity and some of the um, growing points that there can be around diversity. I believe we're giving intentionality to it to increase our focus and, and how, we, how we do diversity, but I still believe we, we have progress to make. And, but I think our focus is in doing that and doing it well. Uh, AU is a very, very welcoming community. Do we have our issues? Yeah, we, we do. Every organization, no matter how big or how small they are, have, have their issues. We become a microcosm of, of society. Um, but, but I think our heart is in the right place. I think we want to do the right things. I really appreciate the heart um, of not only the people that work here at AU, uh, but our leadership and that we're committed um, to continually learning more and wanting to grow. Uh, I think we have done a, a very, very good job of trying to make sure that we were a, an inclusive community. There have been definite times in the history of the Church of God where um, cultural things have gotten in the way and there has been segregation and um, things that have been hard. As an institution, we have been intentional in working to embrace diversity and work with those points that are challenging and also have continue to have work to do. We seek a campus that's more diverse and, um, and hopefully we'll continue to get there.